Good evening, everyone. My name is Austin. Uh, as Missy just said, I graduated from the University of Oregon with a degree in social science and focused in economics and sociology. Uh, I was told to say this to give myself some credibility on my topic, and I think uh, it has something to do with my hair, maybe. <laughs> After university, living abroad, a lot of traveling, it's time for me to move back to Montana. I'm sure, like many of you, I was drawn to Bozeman because of its unique plethora of activity and opportunity. Bozeman is unique. It's been recognized as the best micropolitan economy of the last two years in a row, and I'm sure we can all agree we're living in a booming, valuable community. So I'm up here tonight to talk about some observations about our growing little city and share with you some of my experiences to draw ideas from, simply to help everyone consider where to put our best steps as we move forward. I think it might be worth mentioning, I have no uh, political affiliation, I'm just up here because I think these ideas are worth discussing. Um, starting off, I'd like to get everyone engaged. Uh, please clap your hands with the appropriate amount of enthusiasm if you had trouble finding parking for the event tonight. Um, parking takes up a ton of space, not to mention it's really ugly. Uh, parking isn't free. It costs a lot to provide and maintain, and our city and our businesses are responsible for the bill, which in turn they flip on us, the community members, in the turn or yeah, in the form of increasing taxes and cost of goods. So Bozeman is experiencing above average population growth, which is good for our economy, but as we know, the current parking situation already doesn't satisfy the demand. Soon, out of necessity, the city will need to transition our seemingly free parking to timed paid parking. And for us, this makes a bad situation worse. Parking's ugly cousin, traffic. Uh, obviously, this isn't a picture of Bozeman traffic because it's not all trucks and sewers. <laughs> I'd like to do a little more crowd engagement here. Would you please raise your hand if you enjoy traffic? <laughs> It's hard to see, but uh, from what I can, none of you are raising hands. Um, traffic like parking has a lot of negative impacts. Traffic congestion is stressful. It wastes fuel, which is bad for the environment. It increases wear, in your car, uh, wear on cars, which is bad for your wallet. It can impede emergency vehicles and leads to the spillover effect, where drivers avoid main travel arteries for side streets, causing more congestion. Everyone pretty familiar with this image? Uh, the more cars on the road, the more wear and tear on the streets, and more money is required for maintenance. Unexpected delays like these can cause you to be late for employment, meetings, or education, and could result in personal loss. All in all, traffic, the biggest issue is that it's a waste of time. Traffic has high opportunity costs, because for most people, it's a non-productive activity. People end up spending more time driving and waiting instead of doing something productive which reduces our economic health. Uh, and economics aside, wouldn't we all like to spend more time, or limited time, doing the things we enjoy instead of waiting at you know, an intersection? If you look closely at this picture, it's a visual visualization of the space occupied by 80 people using different transportation methods. I like this image a lot because it quickly helps you understand that the mode in which people travel matters. Uh, it only shows about 40 cars over there, so there's 40 more that it didn't show. Um, so let's start off with alternative transit methods, one that everyone here loves, bikes. Uh, biking is, yeah, bikes. Uh, <laughs> biking is a means of travel, has a lot of benefits. It's cheap, there's no pollution, bikes are space efficient to ride and park, and it's healthy. They're just flat out fun to ride. Um, as a student in Eugene, Oregon, I saw all the benefits of biking play out. It was great. You could get anywhere you wanted on the bike. The city made biking infrastructure a priority, and people widely adopted it as a healthy, reliable way to get around. It's a great example. Increasing bike routes, specifically bike-only routes, that's kind of important, can reduce the dependence on cars. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, UGL's had a killer bus system. This is the EMX. If you ride your bike right up into the bus, um, which I would often do because it was so convenient. Uh, the EMX ran priority lane down all the significant roads, and it would come every nine minutes. And I think that's key for a bus system to be uh, convenient. Um, busing is a great way to reduce the number of cars on the road. It's better for the environment, cheaper, and safer than driving. Busing has been linked to healthier lifestyles because it requires some walking. Uh, shout out to Dale. Um, 
Returning the streamline could really have positive benefits on our community. Now, my favorite of all the transit methods, the rail. These things are the best. They are the safest, fastest, and most comfortable mass transit method. They have all the benefits of buses in addition to holding more people and have an almost perfectly fixed schedule. Lucky for us, they work in snow. I lived in Daegu, South Korea, and the rail system was life-changing. And when I say life-changing, I really mean it. It increased the mobility of elders and youngsters to easily and safely navigate the city. I'm telling you, old people were everywhere. Uh, physical mobility equals economic mobility. I saw it firsthand in Daegu, and studies show that every dollar invested in public transit is four dollars in economic return. Uh, the appearance of this sort of infrastructure is significant. Light rail is an indication that an area is politically and economically committed to conscious, sustainable growth. And I mean, come on, things pretty sexy. Uh, now you might be thinking this all sounds nice, but this is too progressive of an idea, you know? Not in my backyard. Uh, well, let's go back in history. The Gallatin Valley Electric Rail, or Giver for short, was built to draw economic and political attraction to our valley. The rail system operated from 1892 to 1930 and was Montana's only interurban electric railway system. It went from Lindley Park to Bozeman Hot Springs and down to Gallatin Gateway. Seems like a pretty good route, right? Uh, both urban and rural residents benefited socially, educationally, and financially by imagining and building an electric trolley and interurban transportation system based on the needs of the community. Is it time we think about coming full circle? There's an ancient Chinese proverb that I want to leave you with. And it is, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the next best time is today. Thank you.